There are several inputs needed for proper functioning of material requirement planning program. The inputs to a material requirement planning program include Number 1. Product demand. The product demand for end items stems from two main reasons. The first is known customers who have placed specific orders, such as those generated by sales personnel, or from interdepartmental transactions. The second source is forecast demand. Demand from known customers and demand forecast are combined and become the input to the master production schedule. Input number 2 is, Bill of Materials, in short BOM, file, the BOM file, is a document which tells us about an item's product structure and also it tells us about the sequence in which components are assembled and their required number. It also tells us about the workstations in which it is assembled. Bill of Materials gives information about the product structure, that is, parts and raw material units necessary to manufacture one unit of the product of interest. The Bill of Materials file includes Number 1. Product Structure Product structure shows a product build-up. It shows diagrammatically the components required to assemble it, their numbers, and the sequence of assembly. Example, a sub-assembly A is made by joining one unit of components B and two units of components C, as shown in this diagram. Therefore, if 100 units of sub-assembly A are to be manufactured, 100 units of component B and 200 units of components of C are required. From this figure, we see that the requirement of components P and C depends on the requirements of sub-assembly A. The requirement of sub-assembly A, in turn may depends on the requirement of the finished product X. Now let's see the product structure of product X. To make the finished product X, the sub-assembly requires two components of A, and one component of Y. Again at level 2 sub-assembly, we can see that, the component A is made of one component of B and two C components. Now if 100 units of product X are to be manufactured, the following would be required. Each finished product requires one component of Y in the sub-assembly, so, 1 Y, into number of units of required finished product X, equals to, 1 into 100, so we need 100 components of Y in the sub-assembly to make 100 finished product X. Similarly, each finished product requires two component of A in the sub-assembly, so, 1 A, into number of units of required finished product X, equals to, 2 into 100, so we need 200 components of A in the sub-assembly to make 100 finished product X. Similarly, we need 200 components of B in the sub-assembly to make 100 finished product X, and we need 400 components of C in the sub-assembly to make 100 finished product X. The bill of materials file is often called the product structure file or product tree because it shows how a product is put together. It contains the information to identify each item and the quantity used per unit of the item of which it is a part. For example, the product structure of product M has been shown in this figure. The sub-assembly N appears at level 1 as well as level 2 of the product structure. When a computer program reads a bill of material of a product, it starts from the top level which is level 0 as it moves downward, it counts down the product structure tree. If an item appears in more than one level, its number of units cannot be determined unless the computer scan reaches the lowest level. This results in inefficiency of the program. Now, after inputting the product demand and bill of materials file, the third input to the material requirement planning program is master production schedule. The master schedule and bill of materials indicate what materials should be ordered. The master schedule, production cycle times and supplier lead times then jointly determine when orders need to be placed. The master production schedule includes quantities of products to be produced at a given time period. Quantities are included both at aggregate and detailed levels. Aggregate may refer to monthly production and detailed may refer to weekly or daily production. The master production schedule takes the form of a table in which rows represent products and columns represent time components. Let me explain it with the help of an example. Suppose, numbers of cars to be produced by Nissan India in upcoming months is given in this table. Suppose that the above table shows the production plan of Nissan India. Master production schedule. In short MPS, 
Tell us that how much amount of a particular model is to be manufactured in a given period of time. If the aggregate plan is given in months, master production schedule may be divided further into weeks. Let's take an example. Master production schedule of month January is shown in this table, which shows the quantity of production of different models in the different weeks of the month of January. Further, the above shown master production schedule can also contain information on submodels of model. For example, in a given week how many model 1 will be produced with power steering and how many with power windows and so on. Now, after inputting the product demand and bill of materials file and the master production schedule, the third input to the material requirement planning program is inventory records file. The inventory record file contains the status of all the items in the inventory. It includes scheduled receipts of units of item in that interval of time as a result of orders placed in the recent past to suppliers. This necessarily contains the details of the suppliers of the items, the time taken by him to supply the item and the size of each order to be placed to him. Inventory records file under a computerized system can be quite lengthy. Each item in inventory is carried as a separate file and the range of details carried about an item is almost limitless. The MRP program accesses the status segment of the file according to specific time periods. These files are accessed as needed during the program run. Now, after getting all these inputs, how will the material requirement planning program work to process them into outputs? A list of end items needed by time periods is specified by the master production schedule. A description of the materials and parts needed to make each item is specified in the bill of materials file. The number of units of each item and material currently on hand and on order are contained in the inventory file. The MRP program works on the inventory file in addition. It continuously refers to the bill of materials file to compute quantities of each item needed. The number of units of each item required is then corrected for on-hand amounts, and the net requirement is offset to allow for the lead time needed to obtain the material. So, the material requirement planning program has worked on the inputs using these steps. Now, let's see what outputs are obtained from the materials requirement planning program. MRP program generates different reports as the output which is very important for the production managers for taking different decisions. The various outputs of MRP program include Output number 1, Primary Reports The primary reports are the main or normal reports used for the inventory and production control. These reports consist of Planned orders to be released at a future time Order release notices to execute the planned orders Changes in due dates of open orders due to rescheduling Cancellations or suspensions of open orders due to cancellation or suspension of orders on the master production schedule. And, inventory status data. And output number 2, secondary reports. These are the additional reports, which are optional under the MRP system, fall into three main categories. Category A, planned order report. Planned order report tells us about the planned orders that would be released in future date or during a given interval of time. This report helps in preparing the funds required for payments to the suppliers in the future according to the dates and order sizes. For instance, April is the current month and the finance manager wants to see what quantities of raw material have to be made available in the month of May. This report helps him very much in preparing report that what amount of fund is required in May for making payments to the suppliers. Category B. Order Release Report. Order Release Report is that which gives information about planned orders which would be released on the present date. IT helps the purchase managers to release purchase orders purchase orders to the suppliers. This report helps the purchase manager to keep track of the purchase order that have to be sent on a particular day. The material requirement planning logic makers use of the lead time of items in determining the release date of orders, so that goods are supplied by the time the items are required for production. Category C, Order Changes Report These refer to the orders which have been placed in the past and the supplier of these items is preparing for these supplies to be made to the company. During the lead time the material requirement planning may fluctuate because some customers cancel their orders leading to revision of the master production schedule because of this change in demand open orders have to revise. In this case, 
suppliers are told either to cancel the order as placed earlier by the company or to postpone them for some time or to reduce the order size to suit the current requirement. The order change report provides information to purchase manager about all such changes to be made in the open orders with the suppliers.